Hello, my name is Jay Cattry. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. I wanted to thank the event organizers for the kind invitation to speak today, and I wanted to thank you, the audience, for your attention to my talk today, entitled, Balloon Wire Rotoblader is Stuck. What next? These are my disclosures. Let's dive into this topic. What are the potential causes of gear entrapment? The biggest thing to be aware of is that any time you have to deliver equipment in tortuosity or calcification, this is a potential problem. Excessive torque when applied to guide wires, particularly if the tip appears to be fixed in plaque, is a perfect recipe for wire fracture. And excessive force when applied to advancing angioplasty, catheters, stents, or atherectomy devices is also when this tends to occur. Now the treatments are variable. Microcatheters are very, very important to capture fractured guide wires. Trapping balloons can be used to pin fractured balloon and stent shafts if they are still in the guide catheter itself. We want to try, if possible, to avoid applying strong traction to entrapped equipment. However, sometimes it's necessary to do so, and when this is the case, it's important to try to protect the coronary artery either by deep throating the guide catheter or deep seating um, a guide catheter extension to try to protect the remainder of the coronary artery. And lastly, there's an opportunity to release entrapped equipment using a parallel wire with an angioplasty balloon to try to release the trap device. Now the remainder of the talk I'm going to spend showing you some case examples to try to illustrate these scenarios. So the first issue is wire entrapment. My favorite wire is Xion Blue. I particularly enjoy using this with novice operators because it has such exquisite torque response and safety. But there are some unique properties to this wire in terms of its construction. The biggest thing to pay attention to when you're manipulating a guide wire is if the tip, the radiopaque tip stops moving when you apply torque, there's some likelihood that that wire is getting close to fracture if not already fractured. Now, Xi'an Blue and wires like Xi'an Blue have a coil that's inside their radio pay coil. So the radio pay coil you can see on x-ray obviously, but this inner coil is not visible on x-ray. And the big danger of pulling a wire like this is that you will extend this through the coronary artery, out the coronary ostium, and into the ascending aorta, and that would be a disaster. So anytime the tip stops moving, just assume that you've damaged this wire and uh, insert a microcatheter, load it up, and take it as deep as you can take it. And in this case, we're able to get the entire wire out, including the very distal coil. But even if this part of that wire were to remain in the body, you want to make sure all of this part comes out. And the only way to do that is to take a microcatheter as deep as you can possibly take it in order to encapsulate as much of that wire as possible. Because you just can't see this on x-ray. Now, What about balloon entrapment? So advancing a balloon catheter into a heavily calcified artery is basically when this happens. You can wedge the nose of the balloon into the lesion and then the lesion acts almost like a Chinese finger trap where the balloon no longer wants to come back out because it's trapped in the calcium. The easiest and first thing that I would recommend to do is to advance a guide catheter extension to try to remove the balloon. Now in this case what ended up happening is I took the guide catheter extension down in the CTO intervention to actually deliver the balloon. And then when the balloon wouldn't come back, we thought we were in perfect position because the guide catheter's extension is already there and we pulled on this balloon. And what ended up happening is the balloon snapped in two with part of the balloon remaining in the body and the rest of it coming out. You know, that's not the end of the world. At least we got most of it out and we can continue on with this uh, CTO intervention, which is what we ended up doing. But probably what would have been a more elegant way to handle this problem is um, putting in a parallel wire, which we ended up having to do anyway. So this is a parallel knuckle wire with the second balloon. And that second balloon could have potentially released the first balloon and allow it to come out fully intact. So that's something to bear in mind if you um, are more patient than I was in this particular example to remove the entire balloon. What about rotoblader? So tortuosity and calcium, ironically, the situations where you need rotoblader the most is probably where it's gonna get stuck the most likely. I think that this is more likely to happen when you apply excessive force on a 125 burr. The 125 burr has a blunt back end, 
and a very sharp front end. And if it jumps across a lesion, it can be a lot more difficult to get that blunt-ended rotoblader burr back out compared to the 1.5 and larger burrs, which end up having a much more round back end, making them more easy to pull back out. I've also seen this happen when uh, novice operators think that they've completely ablated a lesion and they go in for their polishing run. So the polishing run, they're being a little bit more aggressive with their input and if they hadn't fully ablated the tissue, what ends up happening is the burr gets stuck. And that's kind of what happened here. This burr kind of got stuck um, on the polishing run and uh, we lost flow in this artery. The patient became extremely unstable on the table and there really wasn't a lot of time to do much more than deep throat the guide and apply firm, steady traction to remove the burr. And you can see how everything just snaps out. Now, thankfully, we were able to rewire everything. Um, interesting, this guy ended up needing more atherectomy. So we had to do more atherectomy despite this happening before we could complete his case, which ended up going really well. Now, if this burr had been stuck more distally, I don't think a deep-throated guide catheter would have been enough. What we would have probably had to do is cut the back end of the rotoblader off and deliver a guide catheter extension as deep as necessary and then remove the rotaburr. Probably a more elegant way to deal with this problem is parallel wiring. Now this is only an option in the case where the patient is stable and there's some flow in the artery. In the event that you have an eight French system, you can actually just advance a parallel wire next to the rotaburr and put in a balloon and inflate the balloon proximally to try to release the burr. What these operators show in this paper from 2011 is that if you have a six or seven French system, which is probably more common, is if you cut the back end of the rotoblader and remove the sheath on the drive shaft, that leaves enough space in either a six French or a seven French guide to introduce a second wire and a balloon in order to release the trap rotoburr. I mean, obviously this is only possible if the patient's stable and can handle all of this manipulation, but it's an option to bear in mind and be familiar with. What about orbital atherectomy? Now, orbital atherectomy can cut going down the artery as well as coming back on the artery. So it should, in theory, be advantageous and less likely to get entrapped. But I managed to do that in a case of recurrent instant restenosis. So this patient has multiple stents in the right coronary artery and two layers of stent at the ostium that keep restenosing. And we were never able to fully dilate this area on prior procedures, so this time we decided to do orbital atherectomy. And uh, on our high-speed run, we stalled out right here and uh, could not remove the device uh, by usual methods. Uh, had no flow in the artery, patient became unstable, so again, had no choice but to dethroat the guide catheter and apply firm but steady traction to remove the device. And Interestingly, in this case, we removed not only the device, but also the inner layer of stent and some neointima. Now, thankfully, this patient also did well. We were able to rewire the lesion and treat the patient uh, and got a nice outcome. Uh, but just a word of caution that even this device can cause trouble. So in conclusion, tortuosity and calcification require a very thoughtful application of interventional equipment. Aggressive device manipulation may exceed the operational limits of these devices and you should anticipate these types of things happening and the ensuing complications. You should be familiar with some solutions to try to get yourself out of trouble. That would be paramount for a good clinical outcome for your patients. I want to thank you for your attention. This is my contact information if anybody has some specific questions for me.